Hi everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're talking all about the squares on the periodic table. So first up, let's look at the first square. It's gonna be hydrogen, and we're gonna look at each component individually and learn what they are and how we can use them to find some data. So the first one is the atomic number. The atomic number is in the upper right hand corner, or occasionally you'll find it in the upper middle. Um, it's all gonna be the same thing with the atomic number. The next one is your element symbol. It will be a capital letter. If there is a letter next to it, it will be a lowercase letter. Um, and the element symbol is a representation of the next thing, which is the element name. So in other words, H is representing hydrogen. Um, the last thing on here is gonna be the atomic mass or what is the entire mass of that particular element. So um, the atomic number really shows us the number of protons in that atom. Now what's really cool is if you have a neutral atom, it also shows you the number of electrons that are occurring. So just by looking at the square on the periodic table, I can tell you that hydrogen has one proton and it has one electron in a neutral atom. So let me show you what that looks like. It looks like this. We would have one proton in our nucleus and we would have one electron in our um, energy shell. Now the bottom number is our atomic mass. And the atomic mass is really just like a little equation of saying protons plus neutrons in that particular atom, okay? Now, I know this is weird because it's a decimal, right? And it shouldn't really be a decimal. You can't have a piece of a proton or a piece of a neutron. They're whole, so it should be a whole number. And we do have decimals. And this is because we have isotopes of these elements. If you don't know what isotopes are, or if they're still confusing you, I do have a video on those. Go ahead and give it a watch. But basically what it's saying is they're taking the average of the isotopes that are occurring in the world, and um, they're coming up with the average mass of that particular element, okay? So it will be a fraction, and we will have to um, round that to the nearest whole number when we're trying to figure out neutrons. So if you wanna figure out neutrons, that is the first thing you do. You take the mass, you round it to the nearest whole number, all right, and then you're gonna subtract that from the atomic number, which is up here. Remember the number of protons. So if I was doing this one, I would round this to one, right? Because when we're rounding, we're looking at this um, tenths place right behind the decimal. So it's a zero, obviously it's gonna round down, so it's just gonna be left with one. Um, well, just in case, a little brief review, because I know some people forget how to round. If it is below five, um, you're gonna round down, and if it's five and above, you're gonna round up. And we're looking at this number right here, the one right after the decimal, in order to figure out how to round up or down, okay? So in this case, we're rounding down to one. So it's gonna be atomic mass one minus the atomic number one. So we would end up with zero neutrons, right? So if you're looking back at our atom, the model of the atom that we drew earlier, we have one proton, we have one electron, and we have zero neutrons in our nucleus, okay? And I know that sounds weird or crazy, but it can happen. You don't technically need a neutron to be an atom, you need a proton, okay? And we have that, so we're good to go. So let's go ahead and try boron, just to make sure we have this concept of what is on the squares. So if I'm asking where are the protons or how many protons does boron have by looking at the square, Hopefully you can tell me by now, hey, I'm looking at the atomic number. So I have five protons in boron. Um, if you are looking for electrons in a neutral atom of boron, um, hopefully you're looking at the same spot, right? The atomic number, and that would be five. So it has five, five um, electrons as well. Now, if you wanna know the number of neutrons in boron, this is where we do the little subtraction um, taking place and we're gonna first round this bottom number for the mass, right? The atomic number is, is rounded and we're gonna look at the eight. So the place right after the decimal is where we're looking. Because it's above five, we round up, okay? So we don't round down to 10, we're gonna round up to 11. So it would end up being 11 and we're gonna subtract that from the atomic number, which is five. So we would end up the mass being 11 minus the atomic number being five and that equals six. So boron has six neutrons, okay? I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you need more help with those isotopes or understanding it, go watch that video. If you all found this video helpful today,
please go ahead and click that subscribe button and like this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, you guys.